Hello everybody, it's me Margaret coming to you from North Texas that seems to have confused itself with the rainforest. I don't know, I'm about ready to build an ark and float away. I don't know why we're having so much rain, but it's continual. But right now the temperature is very mild. I want to say it's probably ooh, 68 degrees, so it's nice to sit out here. And that's what I'm going to do to catch you up on projects, because I actually do have finished projects, and I have something to talk about food-related and something very weird uh, that's garden-related. <laughs> so let's see what we got. Well, first of all, this is what I'm working on. It's a crochet bag. It's a knit crepe pattern. I talked about it last week, and I'll insert a picture here so you can see it. Um, I can't say that I find this an enjoyable pattern. <laughs> I don't know why, but it's not the most fun thing in the world, but I think it's gonna turn out cute by the time it's finished. And if you'll remember, I'm using some yarn that was sent to me by one of you ages ago, and it is an acrylic that's stiff. Now, if you wash it, it comes out just as flimsy and nice as it can be, but I want it to stay stiff for this bag. That so makes a lot of sense to me. So, I'll keep you posted on how that goes. Um, like I said, I'm not enjoying it, and so part of me wants to rip it out, but I think I've gotten this far. I want to go ahead and finish it. And speaking of, well, let's do this first. But speaking of finishing things, I had completed this, and I showed it to you last time. I'll put all the information up on the screen in the description box, but this came out really pretty. I had not blocked it at the time, nor had I sewn in the ends, but it's completely finished now. And with that same yarn, I also made this rib diversion, which is a little bit more my style that I like. I'm so pleased with this alpaca. It is so nice. So it blocked up pretty. Here it is, all nice and dry. I blocked this one just to be on the safe side because my bind-offs are generally not so great. But um, this was the bind-off edge, and you know it worked out fine by the time we take all these off. But I definitely am not a good binder offer. But it'll it'll do. And this is the side that has the. This is where you begin, and it just naturally creates this little um, scalloped or pointy edge. I don't know what you would call that. Spikes or scallops. I don't know. But it looked really pretty. I'm happy with it. And uh, it's nice to work with night with good yarn. I mean, it's just such a treat. So fun. Not that I have anything at all against acrylic. It's just... Well, you know what I mean, if you've used good, good, good yarn. And then what I have sitting in my lap here is the linen project that I discovered after five years. I had stuck in a bag and forgot about it, essentially. And I'll, again, I'll put all the information of what this is, what the pattern is. It was a free pattern. And what the yarn is in the description box below. But here's the funny thing. It was almost finished when I pulled it out in the last video to show it to you. But as I started to pick up where I left off, um, I was looking at it closely and I thought, you know, that was five years ago. I think I can do better. <laughs> And I did. I'm very, very pleased. I'm so glad that I ripped it completely out and started all over again because I did a really good job. So here it is. I laid it out to block it yesterday. I didn't use any blocking pins. I just kind of spread it out. So um, it feels pretty much the same as it felt when I was working on it, which is a little bit rough, like a linen fiber. Um, but the more you use it, the more it will become more, you know, soft and pliable, which is when you can kind of feel it in certain parts. I guess that's where maybe I ripped back or tinked back and worked it more. Let me interrupt myself to say that while editing, I just noticed that this yarn is machine washable and dryable. I bet I could have this thing feeling so soft in no time if I did that. I had just hand washed it before and then laid it out to dry. But it turned out great. I like it. I probably will not use 100% linen anymore, but 
I'm one to never say never. So, uh, yeah, this turned out great. Now you'll notice that I don't sew my ends in until after it's blocked. And that is a technique that I learned from Erin, who is my knitting guru, who's taught me everything I know about knitting. Her point is, is that during the blocking process, the fibers stretch and pull, right? So if you were to sew your ends in beforehand, sometimes that could inhibit the way it blocks. In other words, once it dries, it may pull, depending upon how you sewed your ends in. So just to avoid any of that, I just wait till the end. And so I'm in like right this very minute. And I have to say, if you're looking for some blocking mats, I highly recommend these. I'll put a link in the description box to my Amazon store where you can, where I purchased these. It comes with regular pins. They're like T-pins like this, but I also bought these. They're called Knit Blockers by Knitter's Pride. And they're really neat in that they're like a comb. If you can see that, they're like a comb. And there's two different sizes. You got these smaller ones as well. So these, I like these things a lot. Although there really is a purpose for T-pins, I think this is what I use more often. Look for a link below if you're interested. Now, the disappointment in this is because of its shape. I don't know how to wear a triangle scarf. I mean, yeah, you can do something like this, but number one, what is it actually doing for you? It's not keeping you warm, really, and I feel like I look like an old lady in a rocking chair when I wear this. I don't feel like me, so that doesn't work. I also don't like this version on me. I feel like I look like a baby in a bib, and that's just, again, <laughs> not my style so I don't know I've tried different things putting it on the shoulder and and all this kind of stuff but I, I knew I don't know what to do with it and it's awesome so you know there are many videos I know Katrina recently did a video well in the last month or so about different ways to wear uh, scarves and you know that's really helpful for a lot of people but you got to remember different body types and uh, comfort level factors in there so sometimes you just because that there are many ways to wear something doesn't mean that a person would look good in that and and like I said the wearing in the front makes me look like I'm wearing a bib and I think it's because I'm just short in stature it's just a um, kind of overwhelming. It looks like this is wearing me instead of me wearing this. Does that make sense? So if you have any suggestions for petite women on how to wear something like this, let me know. Um, I've played with the idea of folding it or maybe rolling it and, you know, doing something more along the lines like, you know, like this, because who says you have to wear it as a triangle, you know? But I think I may try another scarf. Oh, 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 I got some new knit crate yarn that is awesome. The pattern that came with it was very much like this one, ironically, except for it had ribbing on the top and bottom, but um, very pretty and certainly something that I would probably like to make with it. But I was looking at it thinking, gosh, I might wanna sort of a thin rectangular type of scarf made out of that really nice yarn. Gosh, is it nice. I wish you could reach through the camera and feel it. Let me stop talking about it and show it to you. I really wish you could feel this stuff. It's 90% Surrey Alpaca, 10% Cashmere. It's a worsted weight yarn. And of course you hand wash gently lie flat to dry. So what's a Surrey Alpaca? Now, if this picture doesn't make you smile, I don't know what will. <laughs> Spring Farm Alpacas is where I found this interesting info, and I'll link it below. It's located in the UK, Fletching, East Sussex to be exact, but so cute. So it appears that, quote, there is only one species of alpaca, but two fleece types, often referred to as breeds. They are the Huakea and Surrey alpacas. The Huakea fleece type is commonly described as looking like a teddy bear, and the Surrey fleece type as looking like dreadlocks. 
And when you mix this stuff with cashmere, you have luxury. This is awesome stuff. But back to the main knit crate. I showed you the knit pattern already, but this cute slouchy hat is the crochet pattern this month. And they also sent these cute little stitch markers. I like it when they use lobster claws because then I can use them for either knit or crochet projects. And here's a peek at what's coming this month. Here's the theme, and ta-da, here are the yarns. <laughs> Looks like they nailed the inspiration colors to me. I never specify a color, so I'm looking forward to my surprise yarn. But anyhow, I'm really glad I started it over because I did a better job, and it was fun. The whole project was fun, so I do recommend this pattern. And again, I'll put all the links in the description box below. So we've got some garden issues, apparently. We lost this in the freeze, in the big freeze and it's not coming back at all and some of this is so we've got to trim it now that we see that it's it is alive actually and then we've got different things we've got to dig up but we were waiting just to see what came back and what didn't and we did go ahead and put out some mulch and I don't know I have mixed feelings about this being from Mississippi we always used pine straw and uh, anyway this is what we have right now but I think we actually got a bunch of fungus spores in it because the tiny little mushrooms are popping up in our garden all over the place. So I'm guessing it was in the mulch. Now, those are not that big of a deal, but the other day I was wandering around in the garden and I said, something threw up in our garden. <laughs> yeah. Now you can see some of the remnants like right there over there and i don't even know if you can see but in other parts of the garden here in the front of the house it was a mystery for a while now i started to get worried and i'm thinking are these my animals are these my cats that are getting sick or i didn't know if you know we've got coyotes and the bobcat and all that and i took a stick and poked it to see if i could see you know what it was and i know that sounds really gross but it turns out it it wasn't throw up at all <laughs> It's a type of fungus. It looked like um, the bottom side of a mushroom when I pushed it. So I'm telling this story to a friend of mine and they said, oh, we thought we had something throwing up in our garden too. <laughs> the neighbor said, oh, look, it left my garden and went over to your garden. And anyway, it was hysterical that nobody knew what this stuff was. So if you happen to see a strange looking fungus in your garden, that's what it is. <laughs> And look at Diana's garden. That's my next door neighbor. She's got so much pretty color out there. She knows much more about it than I do. I don't know anything about gardening. So, you know, live and learn. Now, the other day, I, you know, I like to eat low carb. And so I have this recipe for coconut flour muffins. They do kind of have a slight taste of coconut to them. So if you'd like coconut you're good uh, if you don't you might want to stay away from these but I love it and I like the texture of them and you do them in the microwave you make these little muffins in the microwave one at a time as you need so what I really like to do is put all the dry ingredients together in a little packet like for one muffin and um, as I was laying all this out I had a thought I said oh you know what somebody else might like to see this now whether or not you want to eat low carb and you want to use this recipe that's irrelevant the concept of a little microwave muffin in the morning is uh, very handy very quick and you can prepackage yours like this if you want to do it fast and it's also great for kids they can just grab it do their wet ingredients and dump the stuff all in without the measuring because that's what takes all the time is measuring one tablespoon of this and then what was the recipe how much more looking it up going to find how much baking soda or whatever just pre do it all at one time and then you only make the mess at one time and then when you get ready to do it you just dump and mix and put it in the microwave well like this now here's what i do to make this process easier i'll put all my dry ingredients in a piece of plastic and then i'll just kind of wrap them up like this store the whole thing in you know it's like a tupperware or something like that all of these then when i'm ready to make my microwave muffin i'll do the wet ingredient which is melted tablespoon of butter that's approximately a tablespoon maybe maybe a little more and get that little bit down in there where it's 
hotter to melt that some more. Then I'll take the one egg and just drop it right down in there and beat it. And then I'll take a packet of my dry ingredients. Now in this case, because I knew I was about to make one, I just put it all in there and mix it up. And because this is a muffin, you don't necessarily have to beat it until smooth. You just need to beat it until you get all those dry pockets included. And then when you're happy with the way that looks, you put it in the microwave for 90 seconds. And this is what it looks like. Now, I have to admit, it's probably not the prettiest of muffins. And this, of course, can be done in a mug instead of an old measuring cup. This is an old measuring cup that we've put in the dishwasher for so many years. Oops. That it lost all its markings, and so we use it for things like this. But um, you can see it, you know, it's about the size of one muffin. Now remember that coconut flour is very, very full filling, so some people may be able to eat only half, but not me. I eat the whole thing, and um, it's quite delicious. Now I do want to warn you that I cut back on my sweetener. Um, you can put more sweetener in it. You may need to put more sweetener in it for your own taste buds. So uh, you might want to experiment with this recipe before you make up a whole bunch of them, if that's what you want to do. If not, you can, um, sorry, I'm waving at my friend. If not, you can find another recipe that you like and still apply the same principles to this little technique. Several of you have asked for an update on Sister Margaret Mary. Well, here she is rocking her new wig. Unfortunately, the treatment in the clinical trial didn't work for her cancer, but she's got an appointment this week for a new plan of action, so let's just keep those prayers and positive vibes going. Her attitude's great, and she's keeping busy as usual. So clearly I've got a cotton haul here. This was from Love Crafts. It's called Debbie Bliss Cotton DK, and it has really good reviews. I've never used it before, but I thought it was pretty. I like the way each strand looks on here, and I really want to try that Anchors Summer Top that Sandra recommended to me, and I really want to use the yarn that she recommended as well. I'll put a screenshot of it somewhere right here. But this Cotton DK is... Uh, less expensive and since this is my first attempt at this top I wanted to buy something a little bit less expensive but something that I would still want to wear assuming this top turns out well which I'm thinking positively about and I'm hoping it will so um, I'll be casting this on at some point I've got to finish all my projects I don't like to have too many things on the on the hook or the needles so um, Anyhow, I bought these three colors, not sure which one I want to start with, but they're good colors to have no matter the project. Well, as usual, thanks for hanging out with me. I'm going to keep you posted on this. Let's see if I end up giving this away to somebody else who could wear it better than I can, or if I'll discover a new way based on your suggestions or, uh, or my friend's suggestions. We'll see how that goes. But. Um, I don't know. And will she finish this bag? That's the, the continuing saga of whips. You never know, huh? But I do want to work on that Anchors Summer shirt. So I think that's the thing I'm most excited about starting next. So cross your fingers for me and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.